just a few announcements and then we'll get started on today's project. Um, oh, Sharon, I like that sunshine emoji <laughs> because here it's very dreary and gray. And then I had put on a gray sweater this morning. I was like, what was I thinking? But anyways, um, I do like that bit of sunshine. Um, today or This week is the last week for our designer series paper sale. If you recall, there are 15 different designer series papers, some from the annual catalog, some from the holiday catalog. Some are 12 by 12s and some are six by six inch packs. Um, but we have 15 that are on sale 15% off and we're down to the last few days. So please don't forget that. The sale runs through Saturday, October 31st. But if you've had that to, on your to-do list, you might want to go ahead and do it now as we have Halloween and things at the end of the week. Um, and football's back, Big Ten football's back. Yay, Buckeyes won. Uh, my niece is a senior over here at Westerville Central High School, and uh, their team won again Friday night. Um, and this coming week, they play Pickerington Central, which is a really good team, um, but we're hoping the best for, for them. So lots going on. So if you're still interested in getting those designer series papers that are on sale 15% off, you need to do it this week. The other thing is um, last night and this morning, I released a new uh, class to go. So this one is the Dove of Hope. And I know you're not going to see these really well, but there are pictures on my blog and Facebook group and things like that. And also the email that went out. Um, but the class is using the Dove of Hope bundle. That's really hard to get, isn't it? There. And your kit will include everything you need to make... Um, 10 cards to each of these five designs and um, prices, everything are in the email, my blog, my Facebook has a link. Um, if you still have trouble finding it, just let me know and I'll be glad to um, shoot you an email with that. Last week, um, I guess it was Friday, yes, Funfold Friday, I showed how to make a variation on our slimline cards. Okay, and this used the, um, what is it, Dandy Garden or something like that um, suite that's coming out in January. So um, that's gonna be fun to work with. I'm gonna put together a class to put out in January when it's cold and dreary and people need something uplifting, they'll be able to, um, work on some pretty flower cards. Okay, so today I'm going to show you another variation of the slimline card. And here's my sample, and it opens up like that. So let me flip my phone around and we'll get started. I'll show you how to cut that um, and we'll have a good time. I am fe featuring the all around, what is it, all around the town designer series paper. Let me see. I got so many things going on in this craft room, it's crazy. Trimming the town, I'm sorry, trimming the town designer series paper. Really fun. I love that snowflake. I love this with all the little people. Hi, Sylvia. Nice to have you. Hi, Mary Lou. Oh, Sharon, I'm jealous. You have a little sunshine in Wisconsin. And then these houses. And a lot of these you can cut out with the dies in the coordinating bundle, which is the coming home bundle. So it has a um, really cute stamp set with all these different shapes that you can um, stamp and color with your favorite coloring tools. You can group them together, you can layer them, you can build bigger things by putting the smaller pieces together. And then a really awesome um, die set to coordinate. 
and some of these do cut out some of the shapes from the designer series paper. Okay, so, and I will be doing some die cutting with this. Now I will show you the sample card one more time. This, the second card that I'm going to make with you will be, um, will look quite different just because of the paper and things that I'm using. But believe it or not, there's no stamping on this card. Um, really the paper speaks for itself. Um, and even the sentiment is one I cut out from the designer series paper, but everything was cut from pieces of designer series paper. So that's just kind of fun. And of course it does stand up. So let's get started and I'll show you how to make that. You need a piece of cardstock that measures seven inches by eight and a half inches. So on a standard piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock, go ahead and cut off four inches. And then you set that piece aside. You can use it for another project later. And then <clears throat> you want to score this so that it's in the vertical position and score it so you're at the three and a half inch mark. Let me put it up here so you can see. Okay, so there's my seven inches by eight and a half. I've scored it at three and a half down the center. Now, before I fold it and start putting my card together, I need to take off a half inch piece from each side of the top portion of this card front. So, and if you have this um, Stampin' Up paper trimmer like I have, this newest one, latest one, came out a couple years ago, I guess. Um, if you take your cardstock all the way to where the white meets the brown, that is one and a half inches on that side. So I'm going to cut from the top to my score line, which is at three and a half. Okay, and I want to stop. Remember, there are lines on either side of the plastic part of your blade where you hold it. And you want that little line to match up with your score line. Okay, then slide it over and do one and a half inches on this side. Same thing, we're gonna start at the top and go to the score line at three and a half inches. So that's what I have. Now I will tell you too, when I'm doing something like this, cutting partial um, partially through my card base or cutting to a score line, something like that. I always stand so that I'm looking over the very top of where my blade is. And if I'm sitting, I'm looking at an angle and it's a little bit harder to um, meet all the points that you need to. So now I'm going right along. Oh, I should have told you I'm at three and a half inches and I'm gonna score, or I'm sorry, cut until I meet the other cut line. Then I'm going to go down and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm lining up the line on my blade holder, um, blade handle, so that it lines up with the cut line I already have it's still at three and a half inches and I'm just going to cut down and pull that piece off. Okay, so this is what you have now. Okay, that's what you have now. So let's get rid of these pieces and I'll grab my bone folder. So now you want to fold that center piece. So you can see how the card is going to come together now. On the inside, I have a piece of Whisper White cardstock for my neutral that I've cut to three and a quarter inches by eight and a quarter. 
remember on this slimline card, the finished card will be three and a half by eight and a half. And it fits in a regular, um, what I call business envelope or letter envelope. I thought I had one right here. What's behind me? Okay. Then I've cut two pieces of designer series paper for each side, just like I did here. And those measure one and a half inches by three quarter inches. Okay, one and a half by three quarter inches. Well, Joyce, I love that comment. Thank you. When I was growing up, all I ever wanted to do was be a teacher. And, uh, and that is what my degree is in from Ohio State Education. But it's been a long time since I taught. Peter was in the military and then um, is a physician. So when the kids were growing up, I was a stay at home mom. And what I call a professional school volunteer. So it was nice. I could be home with my kids, um, but then I had the opportunity to use my teaching skills and volunteer um, at the school. So a lot of times in their classrooms, but not always. For a while, I ran the Ohio Reads program at their elementary school, which was super fun for me. But yes, I still love to teach, and I think that does come out through um, through my stamp and paste job. All right, so now I'm going to, and on this one again, this is not stamped. This is just cut from the designer series paper, okay? So you can do something that's stamped on there if you want. I'm doing something a little bit different here. I'm going to add this designer series paper with the snowflakes and then this will be the background for a little snow scene. Okay, so now I have a piece of white cardstock that measures five and a quarter inches long. And what is it? Two, it's like two and a quarter, two, no, it's two and a half inches. Um, and what I'm going to do is just tear some pieces and this will be um, become my snow, my little snow hills, okay? Welcome Kathy from Missouri. Hi Sylvia and Janelle. Yes, Joyce, that um, college education is definitely ingrained in me. Anybody out there a Buckeye fan? Ugh. Andrea came over. We were so excited to be able to watch football. We were like giddy and stuff. It was a little annoying even, I'll say. Um, at one point she said, Mom, stop, you're louder than me, <laughs> which made me laugh. Okay, so, you know, I'm going to trim a little bit off. So if you're doing this at home, instead of making that two and a half inches wide, just make it two. I think that's plenty for this card. And what I'm gonna do is just layer these like that so it looks like snow. Super easy, right? And I know we have fun day guys with you know a little curve in them that we can use for hillsides and things like that. But sometimes I think it's just fun to tear the paper because you just get a different fun look. And when I um, do this, when I add, adhere these to my card front, I'm only putting adhesive down at the bottom and the sides. That way, if I want to tuck in a shape behind the snowbank or between the snowbanks, I can do that. The other thing is when I tear, you know, you get a side where you can see the tearing and then the other side, not so much. I like to use the side that has more texture um, on top. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing here. Adhere the sides. 
a little too much glue on that. Let me wipe some off. Okay. I should show you what I just did. I had a little glob of glue right there, and I thought as soon as I press this down, that glue will be spilling out. So if that happens, I just take a like the edge of scrap paper and I just pull some of the glue off like that and then throw that piece away. So a little tip there. And you just want to match up your sides and your bottom like that. Okay. Now for the next part, I'm going to use some dies here to cut out, and I'm not going to get very many on here, but I want to cut out a few shapes from um, my designer series paper and the coordinating dies. Remember I said too, sometimes we have those nice curvy Line. So if you really want that's opposed to um, tearing your paper for the snow banks, we do have these two dies in this set that will actually die cut the snow bank for you. Okay, so I'm going to pull a couple of these out. And if we're lucky, I'll pick some that we can cut several out at once. So since I'm cutting with dies, I'm using platforms one and two and three. Then I'm putting my paper and my dies down. And then I'll put another um, number three on top. Or if you have the old dies too, those work just as well. I'm gonna cut out this tree. Who remembers the trick for making sure um, your dies don't move or scoot off the image you wanna cut? Does anybody remember that trick? Oh, Sylvia, another order. <laughs> Marty, the best is yet to come. You'll probably want to go back and look at um, the beginning of the replay so you can see how we cut the paper. Yes, Joyce, the, using the washi tape. Just a tiny piece of washi tape to hold the dies in place, especially helpful when um, You've got small pieces to cut, and also when you're trying to cut out several pieces at once. That way you'll catch them before they anything jumps around. I think I can do. You know what? I was going to do that little tree, but I covered it with washi. So I'll stick with these three. You can always add more later, right? Yes, Sharon, post-it notes work just as well. <laughs> Marty, you're making me laugh. The sorcery. <laughs> We're making a, a another variation on the slimline card today. Okay, let me put all these pieces and parts to the side. I love the dies we're getting from the new manufacturer. They literally just fall out. I'm so impressed. And of course, our new stamp and cut emboss machine is awesome as well. This blue house right there. A little red house. Do you see how, um, remember I said to um, adjust it here at the bottom and sides, so that way if you want to tuck these pieces in between the snow banks, you can do that. Some of you are probably like, what? Don't say that S word. I have to admit I like snow. I don't necessarily like driving in it, but I do like snow. And I love when, even now, I don't even have any kids at home or still, in, well, I guess Emily's in grad school, but um, I still get excited for kids 
when there's a snow day. It's terrible. But with my kids, that was always a drop everything and play day. If they got a snow day, I wanted to do the same thing, just drop everything and play. And they were always ones that enjoyed playing outside in the snow. So we would do things, which we always did growing up too in my family. You didn't stay in the house, you went out and played. All right, let me add a few more. I'm gonna put dimensionals on this blue tree and I'm going to tuck the bottom it's behind the other snow bank in front here. Almost looks like they're getting snowed in, doesn't it? Actually, there's several places I think in the country that have had snow in the last couple of days. I know Canada's getting a lot of early snow too. I see some of my demonstrator friends posting pictures my one friend has had a, like a life-size skeleton out for Halloween and they've named it Clarence and she poses it and they take pictures every day and it's so funny. But poor Clarence was freezing to the bone in the snow out there. Okay. What do you think? Ooh, it's so, so cute. I love this paper. You know I go crazy for pretty much all designer series papers, but this one... It's sort of, to me, it's almost like um, playing with blocks. You can cut a bunch of things out and make your scenes and whatnot. Now here, I've cut out from the designer series paper, a bunch of different holiday sayings. And I wanna show you how I did this because some people are intimidated by this, but you really don't need to be. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. But basically, this is the paper. It's the back of the wreath one. And there are all kinds of different holiday sayings in here. Some are English, but many are, um, well, the others are all um, in other languages, languages that we service around the globe as a Stampin' Up! company. So that's why you'll see that, which that's kind of fun too. Um, but what I do, with my Stampin' Trimmer, I lay the side of my designer series paper along the top so that, and I look for that division between two colors and I put that division of the two colors, I'm trying to point with something. So it really is right there on the cutting and scoring track. And you can look at it at the opposite end and see that it too is falling in that cutting scoring track. So you're just gonna lay it in there or lay it there. If you don't want it to move, use a post-it note or something to help you. But yeah, this is like barely, these are barely a quarter of an inch. Okay, and if you do that, you can go through, this is how I've cut all of mine. So, so much easier than cutting the whole thing with your paper snips and trying to keep everything straight. And then from there, I just do a quick snip like that. Okay, these are all different languages here in the blue. I see tis the season, I wanna keep that one. Some of you might use the other languages. Um, but that's all I do. So super easy to cut. So do not be intimidated by that because I've shown you an easy way to do it, okay? Oh, Marty, I'm glad you think it's so stinking cute. Okay, so let's put something fun here. Here's season's greetings, Merry Christmas, peace on earth, merry and bright. Let it snow. Okay, I'm gonna do let it snow. Although the green's getting kind of lost. Maybe I need something with a little more color. Um, greetings of the season. What do you think? Anybody partial to something in there? That's too much blue, isn't it? Let's go with let it snow. Ah, why not? We could even put it up here somewhere. 
joy to the world. See, like now I'm getting all kinds of crazy here. Let's just stop, Mary. I'm going to go with let it snow. I think that was my first instinct. Just a very, very, very thin line of the multi-purpose glue. And I'm going to stick it down right there. Okay. Now I think we can add some embellishments. How about you guys? Um, you're all about the bling, aren't you? Sounds like sh that should be a song. All about the bling, all about the bling. Instead of all about the bass. I don't even know why I thought of that. I'm not much of a singer. Things don't usually come to me that easily. Okay, I pulled out two different uh, embellishments and you can help me decide what to use. We have the blue adhesive back gems and we've got the light blue and the dark blue. And then we have the adhesive back snowflake, which are, they're like sequins. And some look more pinkish and others look more, um, and they're all iridescent, so the color varies, um, but more greens and blues, and this is like more pinks and yellows, I would say. So what do you think? The blue gems or the snowflakes? Tasha says light blue gems. I'm going with you, girl. I would have done anything you said, but <laughs> let's add some of those light blue gems. Tasha, where are you from? Hmm. I like the ways these pop off so easily. There's three. Maybe I'll put one on. Do I think, do you think I need more? I just have three. More? Tasha, oh, Ohio. What part of Ohio? I think we need a little bit more bling, don't you? I'm going to put one up here. And I'm going to put one. Down here, I think. Okay, so I have five blue gems on there. I hope you can see those on the video. I think they're cute. I think that's a great choice for this card. Okay, any questions for me? Always more bling. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, Tasha, Cincinnati, okay. I lived in Liberty Township and then in Mason for 10 years with my family. And then I moved up here two years ago. Wonderful. Okay. Unless you're making multiple cards. <laughs> oh, you think seven? Joyce says go seven. Should we be real daring? Okay, we'll go seven. I assume you're talking about... Um, the faceted gems. I hope so, because that's where I'm going with this. Should we put one over here? I think we should. And maybe another one here. No, I don't like this one here. I'm moving that. Go up here. Okay. Oh, Joyce, I think you were right. Seven seems good. That is a big card. Okay, Sharon, um, we started out with seven inches by eight and a half inches long. We cut away one and a half by three and a half at the top and bottom corners. Okay. And then um, the designer series paper. So this finished part, this cardstock part is five and a half by three and a half. So therefore the designer series paper that I put down is five and a quarter by three and a quarter inches, Sharon. Okay, five and a quarter by three and a quarter. And then these two pieces 
are one and three quarters by three quarters. No, one and three quarters by three and a quarter inches. Okay. The first slimline card can be made with the paper shear. Yes, yes, absolutely, Joyce. You can just cut away some of that. There's, there's a lot of fun scenes in your paper shear. I know you only got a half of a sheet, but I'm sure you can um, find other fun scenes. Even that, I mean, that alone is so cute, isn't it? The little kids exchanging a present out in front. So yes, great idea, great use for that, Joyce. Oh, Tashi, you bought it on sale, awesome. Don't you love a good sale? How did I do the snow? Okay, I'll show you that quickly. Um, I'll just use this piece of scrap, but for this use, I used um, five and a quarter by two inches. And what I did, Julie, was just gently tore it. And when I tear, I like to pull the paper towards me. I'm right-handed, by the way, if that makes a difference to anybody who's watching. I'm right-handed, so I'm pulling the paper towards me with my right hand. Okay, and then you get a side that's more smooth and a side where you can see more of the fibers of the paper. I like to see all those fibers. And then I just layered them like that. And when you layer them like this, my tip for you is to adhere only the sides and the bottom. That's how I was able to tuck in my houses, my little buildings there. Okay, so I would just adhere this to my card, sides and bottom only. Okay. Let's see, did I miss any other questions? Oh, I think I, okay, I think I saw and answered all the questions. So there you go. Okay. Who's going to make one of these variations on the slimline card? Anybody? I hope you're going to try. Oh, Marty, awesome. Now you can add clear or white glitter to the fiber. Okay, I don't have any glitter handy, but I do have my Wink of Stella. So how about if we just color some Wink of Stella on the edges. That is brilliant. Okay, this is why I love doing Facebook Live so much more than um, a video. And videos are great, don't get me wrong. And if you do them, I'm glad you do. Um, for a long time, before I ever started Facebook Lives, I did videos and it would take me so long to make a 20, 30 minute video because I always felt it had to be perfect. And if I didn't use a correct word or something wasn't perfect, I would start over making the video. It was horrendous. It could literally take me an entire day. And then when I finally got up the nerve to do um, Facebook Lives, I realized how fun it is. And rarely do I get nervous doing a Facebook Live. Um, but I just look forward to it, especially this year with the pandemic and not seeing people in person. Um, what a great way to connect. Plus, I get ideas from all of you. And isn't that what the stamping and paper crafting is all about? Sharing, um, sharing our ideas and our creativity. Yes, Marty is our, our artist, our real artist. Okay. All right. Thanks for joining me today. I'm so glad you were here. Thank you once again for um, being accommodating with me, changing the time today. And um, I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday on Stamp and Scrap with Mary Nave. I'll be on my business page. So if you can help me out by inviting people to like that business page, Stamp and Scrap with Mary Nave, I would appreciate it so much. I will be giving away a uh, Stampin' Up! prize for, um, and to get um, 
to get your name into the drawing for that prize on Wednesday, um, you will need to share. Okay, so when you get on to that Facebook Live at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, be sure to share the Facebook Live. Um, so that would help me very much. And what else do I have for you? I have a couple things in mind for Wednesday. One is a technique and the other is some new product. Um, the quite curvy celebrations. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there's a way for me to combine those either. But anyways. Okay, thank you very much. I will see you Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Stamp and Scrap with Mary Nabe. Um, don't forget that we are in the final week of our designer series paper sale. And a final reminder that I announced a new class to go today or last night, this morning. Um, this one is the Dove of Hope card class. And in this class, you'll make 10 cards, two of each of these five designs. Really pretty cards. All right, have a good night, and I will see you soon.